Hello, myself Muhammad Ayaz Khan and I am a science and technology faculty at Next IAS. Today in this video, I am going to have a discussion with you on a topic called transgenic crops. Huh? So, the topic which we will be discussing is called transgenic crops. Now, this topic I am sure among those who are watching this video uh, as well, we will be having two groups. One like uh, this is one of the best thing which could have ha happened to agriculture world over, I am not talking about India alone or other, other I am not saying right or wrong is it is one of the worst thing that could have been done. So, but as they say uh, there are three sides of the story, your, your version, my version and the truth, is not it. Hmm? So, neither the first group which generally includes the multinational companies or the scientists who have been involved in such research and some of the corporates, hmm? uh, they are the one who support such version of the GM crops and the other being the environmental groups. Hmm? So, we the aspirant of the civil servants, civil services exam, we have to be as close to the truth as possible if not absolutely right on you know the mark. Hmm? So, transgenic crops uh, like what is the mandate here? Hmm? Under this topic, uh, I will be discussing first the basics of uh, transgenic crop, the approach how they are developed, not too much technical, but enough to fulfill the requirements of our exam. Hmm? Then after discussing the basic part, hmm? We will come to a specific examples of transgenic crop like the most famous being in India is Bt cotton because this is the only transgenic crop or GM crop for that matter which has been permitted for cultivation in India. Yehi ek 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 matra GM fasal hai jiski krishi ki anumati bharat mein di gai hai. Iske lawa other than that uh, you can find Bt brinjal. Uh, uh, after Bt brinjal, you will have GM mustard, hmm. GM mustard then you have this uh, golden rice, then you have this GM rice, uh, transgenic rice, uh, terminator seeds. And the list is very very long, mm -hmm. golden mustard, mm -hmm. flavor silver tomato mm -hmm. and then uh, GM maize, GM soya bean, GM wheat, mm -hmm. all these are the examples of uh, what we call as transgenics. So, here our main focus will be on Bt cotton, besides that I will talk about Bt brinjal also mm -hmm. and obviously mm -hmm, others I will just give you the basic concepts of that. So, let us talk about first transgenic, transgenic kya hote hai? Hmm? Deekho, transgenic uh, there is a word called genetic modification or GM. Hmm? So, GM is genetic modification. What is genetic modification? Genetic modification means changing the genetic makeup. Now, how can you change the genetic makeup? Obviously, you can change the genetic makeup by removing a part of the DNA or adding a part to the existing DNA. So, obviously genetic modification involves addition or deletion of DNA that is what we call as genetic modification. But when this addition, when this addition of the DNA is from one species to another species. That this particular addition is called transgenic. So, transgenic is a specific example of genetic modification, is a specific example. 
which example when the gene is transferred from one species to the other species that is that genetic modification is transgenic. Now let's see transgenic could be plants as well as animals. So they could be plants as well as animals. So animals be yes animals be hote hai. like a spider goat nahi spider man ka isse koi lena dena nahi dekho ab ye wo science fiction ho jayega hmm? spider goat gene from a spider into goat a spider is one species goat is another species na sir aisa kyun kiya is goat ke sath actually goat ke sath nahi spider ke sath hua actually we wanted that protein which is made by spider in its web because that protein is stronger than steel wire for the same dimensions so we requested the spider could you please make this for us the spider refused to accept our request so what we did then we took the dna of the spider and from that dna we isolated the particular gene which is responsible for the synthesis of that protein and transferred that gene into goat goat bakri mm -hmm. and from the milk of the goat that protein is extracted and used for various commercial things like bulletproof material fire resistant material one or more example i can give you is liger liger gene from lion into tiger and recently there was a news like we could be harvesting human organs from pig by obviously carrying out genetic genome editing but that hmm, that i am leaving for some other day in future if i will come up with the videos on genome editing involving crispr cas9 then we'll discuss that over there hmm. now here let's focus on the plants plants now plants includes here bt cotton bt brinjal gm mustard golden mustard gm rice transgenic rice terminator seeds etc 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 so now it starts hmm. sir so how come we can develop these transgenic so i will explain it with the help of example called bt cotton we all know in this case hmm, in bt cotton in bt cotton bt stands for a soil bacterium soil bacterium mrda mein paya jane wala ek bacteria hai and this soil bacteria is known for making a toxin ye ek vishakt padarth banata hai and that toxin is known as crystal protein is known as crystal protein and when this crystal protein enters the gut gut means digestive system pachan pranali hmm? and when this crystal protein enters the gut of the pest of the pest it gets active it gets active so why it becomes active in the gut of the pest it becomes active in the gut of the pest because the this protein requires alkaline conditions to be active and the gut of the pest has got alkaline conditions and it gets active and once it gets active obviously you know the pest will die and once it gets active it will kill the pest it will kill the pest so this bacteria which we call as bacillus thuringiensis huh? bacillus is known to the human beings for a long time but earlier what we used to do we means the homo sapiens huh? what we used to do we will spray this bacteria over the crop and this bacteria will make that protein which protein crystal protein and when the pest will attack the leaves or the flowers of that crop hmm, by the time they will be chewing the leaves before that they will ingest the crystal protein and they will die 
and they will die. But this was not transgenic at all because you were just you were, you were just spraying the bacteria, you were not transferring the gene. We wanted, we wanted something that this should become the synthesis of this protein becomes a permanent attribute, a permanent feature of the crop. Those fossil ka ye ek isthai gun ban jaye. So that we don't have to spray the pesticide, kyunki phir humko us per कीट नाशक का छिड़काव नहीं करना पड़ेगा उसके क्या फायदे होंगे उसके दो फायदे तो डेफिनेट होंगे तीन फायदे होंगे बल्कि एक एनवायरमेंटल है फर्स्ट बेनिफिट इज एनवायरमेंटल व्हेन यू आर नॉट स्प्रेइंग द पेस्टिसाइड ऑब्वियसली इट विल नॉट डैमेज द एनवायरमेंट सेकंड बेनिफिट इज टू द फार्मर्स व्हेन दे आर नॉट स्प्रेइंग द पेस्टिसाइड्स दे विल नॉट बी एक्सपोज्ड टू द हार्मफुल केमिकल्स तो जब वो उन हानिकारक कीटनाशकों का छिड़काव नहीं कर रहे होंगे तो उनके स्वास्थ्य पर भी जो है नकारात्मक प्रभाव नहीं होगा और तीसरा इसका जो फायदा है वो ये है कि फार्मर्स का जो इनपुट कॉस्ट है वो कम हो जाएगा बिकॉज फिर उनको जो है वो कीटनाशक नहीं खरीदने पड़ेंगे और तीसरा इसका थर्ड बेनिफिट ऑफ दैट इज the input cost of the farmers will come down because they do not have to buy the costly pesticides and one more benefit is when the pest will not be able to do the damage the productivity will be higher ek aur fayda iska ye hoga ki jab wo keet fasal ko nuksan nahi pahuncha payega to utpadakta badh jayegi to char fayde hoge yahan par health environment and two are economic and obviously if you see we will be self sufficient in the production as a country so that is, these are obviously the obvious benefits so sir this is a wonderful thing but never be in haste in arriving the con at the conclusions fine so then what happened with the in modern biotechnology one of the revolutionary things which has happened one of the many revolutionary things which have happened is recombinant dna technology recombinant dna technology which is obviously genetic engineering genetic engineering is the manipulation of the genetic material and what we what is recombinant dna technology obviously recombinant dna technology is simple combining the dna from two different sources combining the dna from to different sources so that we have dna with new features so that we have dna with new features to do alag alag sroton se prapt dna ko jab hum ek sath laate hain aur jisse ki ek naye gun jo hai hum pradan kar paaye fasal ko to usko hum recombinant dna technique kehte hain तो यहां पर रिकॉम्बिनेंट डीएनए कैसे समझा जाए हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड रिकॉम्बिनेंट डीएनए विच इज द बेसिस ऑफ द ट्रांसजेनिक क्रॉप्स इज दिस लाइक बीटी आई अगेन गो बैक टू बीटी कॉटन व्हाट वी वांटेड वी वांटेड द एबिलिटी टू सिंथेसाइज दिस दिस प्रोटीन शुड कम टू कॉटन विच प्रोटीन क्रिस्टल प्रोटीन so we wanted something which is naturally synthesized by the bacteria should be synthesized by the cotton to hum ye chahte the ki bacteria ka wo gun jisme ki wo vishakt protein ka sanshleshan karta hai wo wah sanshleshan shamta kapas mein bhi aa jaye hum ye chahte the to sir humne kya kiya humne is bacteria ka dna le liya we extracted the dna of this extracted the dna and from that dna we isolated the gene isolated the gene which gene the gene which is responsible for the synthesis of the crystal protein the gene which is responsible for the synthesis of the crystal protein humne wo gene us dna se nikal alag kar liya जिससे कि उस प्रोटीन के संश्लेषण होता था 
then this gene was attached with the vector 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 matlab vahak vector is virus vector is bacterial dna plasmid hmm? Hmm? and with the help of this vector the gene is transferred into cotton cell into cotton cell wonderful then from the cotton cell we have a complete cotton plant and this is bt cotton and this cotton which is bt differs from the natural cotton in one fundamental aspect and that fundamental aspect is that it is capable of producing capable of producing the same toxin which toxin crystal protein this is how this is how bt cotton became pest resistant this is it this is the formula the character you want transfer that particular gene that's as simple as this if you can manipulate that gene then obviously you can have the desired character in the crop with the same approach with the same approach you can make a crop you can make the crop drought resistant drought resistant for that you have to transfer the gene from cactus or those plants which survives in those conditions where the water availability is on the lesser side yahan par jal ki uplabdhta kam hoti you can make them water resistant also water resistant water resistant like transfer the gene from water hyacinth into crop you can make them herbicide tolerant now herbicide i hope everybody knows now herbicides are the chemicals which are sprayed to kill the unwanted vegetation these are the chemicals but your crop is also a vegetation so what we do first we transfer the gene in a crop so that gene provides protection to the crop against the action of that herbicide so our crop remains the sa remains safe but the herbs the grass and all these thing unwanted vegetation which comes up that is being eliminated that is herbicide tolerant then you can make them salt re resistant salt tolerant and here i can't stop resist uh, myself from giving the example of gm rice gm rice developed by ms swaminathan research foundation what they did just just understand this they took mangrove 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 which grows in marshy area salty conditions sundarban and all that hmm? so they took mangrove and from mangrove they took the gene which gene the gene which ensures the survival of mangrove tree in those in that salty water and that gene is transferred into rice salt resistant with the same you can make them uh, obviously uh, with you can increase the shelf life they can remain fresh for longer duration you can make them biofortified biofortified increasing the level of nutrients increasing the level of the nutrients or there is one more approach farming farming p h a r m i n g no this farming the spelling will be this because it is pharmaceuticals plus farming so sir what is farming obtaining pharma pharmaceutical substances from genetically modified plants these and many other things can be done 
these and many other things will be done can be done in transgenic crops in transgenic crops fine so then uh, like uh, these are some of the examples <coughs> now move further so sir then what happened in india as far as bt cotton is concerned so basics of bt cotton you already know See, as far as Bt cotton is concerned, uh, it was introduced in the year 2002 by a joint venture of Monsanto and Mahiko. Mahiko is Maharashtra Hybrid Seeds Company. And it was introduced under the name Bolgard. This was exactly the question in preliminary 2021. So, the commercial name of Bt cotton introduced in India by Monsanto and Mahiko was given the name Bolgard. Hmm. So, in 2002, we introduced Bolgard 1. Hmm. Then we introduced Bolgard 2 in the year 2006. Now, you will ask a very simple question. Hmm. So, what is the difference between Bolgard 1 and Bolgard 2? Hmm. The fundamental difference between Bolgard 1 and Bolgard 2 is the number of genes from the bacteria. Bolgard 1 has got one gene from the bacteria and that gene is Cry1AC. Hmm? Whereas this one Bolgard 2 has got two genes Cry1AC and Cry2AB obviously from the same bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis means the scope of pest resistance in Bolgard 2 is more than the pest resistance capacity of Bolgard 1. And Monsanto and Mohiko promised that this will be having the protection, Bolgard will provide protection against three types, three types of ball worm which has the which has the zoological name lapidapteron hmm? lapidapteron and these three ball worms against which hmm, the ball good was promised to be having the resistance are this uh, uh, spotted ball worm spotted pink ball worm and American ball worm. American ball worm. These are the three. Hmm? So, Bonsanto and Mahiko were very clear. So, these three won't be able to damage your crop if you will use our variety. Now, somewhere you know, like if you like you might have read in the newspapers in Haryana, in Haryana, some of the par farmers were planning to have HT cotton. Now, if you are reading newspaper and suddenly you come across HT cotton, and then you will say Hindustan Times Walo ne apna naam likh de. No, HT means herbicide tolerant cotton. Hmm? These two are only pest resistant. Okay, resistant against them. There is one more which is which is not permitted in India, which is not permitted in India. And that's why I'm writing it with red. Hmm? That is ball guard 3. Bolgard 3 has not been given permission in India. So, why it has not been given permission? Why it is called Bolgard 3? So, that I will be mentioning on the next slide. Hmm. If you see Bolgard 3, <coughs> first and foremost, Bolgard 3 is pest resistant and herbicide tolerant. And it provides, it is tolerant against which herbicide? It is tolerant against the herbicide called glyphosate. Glyphosate is a chemical. Means sir, what is the meaning? Iska matlab kya hota sir? Wo kharpatwar nashak rodhi. Hmm? Agar main iska hindi sanskaran aapko uplabd karao. Hmm? To kharpatwar nashak kya hota hai? Jo ki avanchniye vanaspati ko samapt kar de. 
मगर कैसे तो उसके लिए हम जीन ट्रांसफर करते हैं किस में क्रॉप में तो सर इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि जिसमें इस क्रॉप पर अगर हम बॉल गार्ड थ्री स्प्रे करेंगे तो ये क्रॉप डिस्ट्रॉय नहीं होगी बिल्कुल सही समझे आप मगर वो जो सर वो जो घास वगैरह उगाती है खेत में वो खत्म हो जाएगी बिल्कुल सही सर अगर हम कुछ और केमिकल स्प्रे करें ग्लाइफोसेट की जगह तो फिर उसका एक ही परिणाम आपके सामने होगा और वो परिणाम ये होगा कि आपकी फसल भी खत्म हो जाएगी और घास फूस भी खत्म हो जाएगी खेल समझ गए डिड यू अंडरस्टूड द गेम यस सो द कंपनी द कंपनी विच हैज द आई पी आर इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट फॉर द क्रॉप has the intellectual property right for the herbicide as well this is the game this is the game means if i am harvesting ball guard 3 as a farmer although in india it is not permitted but somewhere else in the world then there is only one herbicide that will work and that is glyphosate okay so this is this is obviously this is not fair practice this is against competition and moreover forget about competition and all for a moment this glyphosate is carcinogenic carcinogenic it causes cancer chalo competition to baad mein aayega jab wo survive karega kisan sir aisa nahi hota aisa hua us mein in us this ball guard 3 is permitted and there was a farmer a poor farmer with just few thousand acres of land hamare kisan to bahut rich hote hain with one acre of land hmm theek hai wo poor tha bechara 5000 acres zameen thi uske paas and uh, that fellow obviously developed cancer and later it was found because of glyphosate and he filed a case against monsanto monsanto the company which has the ipr and the us court ordered Monsanto to pay damages to that farmer. अब क्या हमारा farmer इतना जागरूक है कि वो वहां जाकर Monsanto के खिलाफ केस करेगा चलो वहां जाकर नहीं इंडिया में ही कर देगा क्या उसके पास इतना एक्सेस है बेस्ट ऑफ द लॉयर्स को लेकर ये एक इशू है जिसको हम बिल्कुल यहां पर टच नहीं करेंगे बिकॉज दैट इज नॉट पर्टेनेंट टू द टॉपिक ओके so we can't be very you know you we can't see with the blinkers on so productivity will increase but there are other extraneous variables also which you can't overlook which you can't overlook productivity at what cost that is also the factor ha huh? so that's 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 just keep that thing in mind ha huh? so glyphosate is there hmm so two questions emerges here one is health aspect and the other is other is the ethical aspect how come you can control both the crop as well as the chemical which will be used as a herbicide in that crop hmm that that i i think it goes against the competition norms so this bolgard 3 is also known as ht cotton herbicide tolerant cotton it is also known as rrf rrf means round up ready flax round up ready is the commercial name for glyphosate so glyphosate is sold commercially under the name round up ready it is very much like this paracetamol and crocin hmm? we all know crocin is the brand name and paracetamol is the name of the chemical so similarly glyphosate is like paracetamol and roundup ready is the crocin hmm? so if you some come, come across somewhere rrf cotton so rrf cotton is nothing but the ball guard 3 in india it has not been permitted and uh, you can agree or disagree in my opinion that's a right decision it has not been permitted because there is one more problem here why it has not been permitted because it will lead to the emergence so first is in health second is uh, the uh, uh, competition related and the third one is it will lead to the emergence of it will lead to the emergence of super weeds 
सुपर वीड्स मींस हर बी साइड टॉलरेंट वीड्स हाउ कम सर बिकॉज देर इज अ फेनोमिन कॉल्ड जीन फ्लो देर इज अ फेनोमिन कॉल्ड जीन फ्लो सर वॉट इज जीन फ्लो सी इट्स लाइक माई माई एच टी कॉटन लाइक दिस दिस इज कॉटन बॉल एंड दिस इज द जीन दिस ब्लू डॉट इज द जीन which make is which make it tolerant against the glyphosate now there is a grass here this is grass gene flow means pollens p o l l e n s paragakarna these pollens when they will go with air they will come here ha huh? so now the gene will be here in this grass also and now on these grass glyphosate won't work then you are obviously creating one more problem these weeds will be stubborn ziddi hatenge nahi hat dharmi ho jayenge aapko kya karna padega now you have to hire labor manual you have to remove them manually this will further this will lead to the increase in the input cost so there is an economic reason there is an environmental reason there is a health reason and there is some other reason also that is why it has been not permitted in india fine clear so which one now what was the question here ball guard 1 and ball guard 2 hmm? this was exactly the question in preliminary 2020 मूव फर्दर मूव फर्दर आगे बढ़ते हैं सर फिर सर क्या हुआ देखो फिर उसके बाद बहुत कुछ हुआ वन वेरी बिग पॉजिटिव आउटकम ऑफ बी टी कॉटन हैज बीन वेन वी अडोप्टेड बी टी कॉटन इन टू थाउजेंड टू एट दैट टाइम द प्रोडक्टिविटी वॉज वन हंड्रेड नाइनटी वन किलोग्राम पर हैक्टेयर विच इज रीच समेयर क्लोज टू 470 किलोग्राम पर हेक्टेयर ओके और इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी एग्जैक्टली तो दैन इन दैट केस द प्रोडक्टिविटी हैज रीच्ड 477 हंड्रेड किलोग्राम पर हेक्टेयर विच इज ऑब्वियसली 2.5 पॉइंट फाइव टाइम इंक्रीज विच इज रफली रफली टू पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स इंक्रीज इन प्रोडक्टिविटी इट्स वंडरफुल इंडिया हैज बिकम uh the second largest producer and exporter of cotton in the world wonderful wonderful sab kuch acha chal raha achanak 2012 parliamentary committee on agriculture and food security came with the report and the report was stop bt गवर्नमेंट टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया द पार्लियामेंट्री कमिटी से रुक जाओ सर इसको रोक दो सर वॉट वाई इज इट सो बिकॉज दिस इज सर दो रीजन है फर्स्ट बायो सेफ्टी बायो सेफ्टी मीन सर वी आर नॉट श्योर हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू अफेक्ट ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड एनवायरमेंट हमें नहीं मालूम कि इंसान के स्वास्थ्य पर क्या असर पड़ेगा इसका और दूसरी चीज हमें नहीं मालूम इन्वायरमेंट पर क्या असर पड़ेगा और तीसरा पॉइंट थर्ड पॉइंट फ्रॉम 2009 ऑनवर्ड्स वी वर हैविंग कंफर्म्ड रिपोर्ट्स ऑफ द पेस्ट बिकमिंग रेजिस्टेंट नाउ इट वाज नॉट द क्रॉप हैविंग द रेजिस्टेंस नाउ द पेस्ट वाज गेटिंग रेजिस्टेंस अगेंस्ट व्हाट द टॉक्सिन सो वी लाइक द ना समय का चक्र पूरा हो गया This is the shelf life of GM crops. Within seven years, the pest acquired the resistance. Sir, अभी तो आप तारीफ नहीं. I am just giving you both sides of the story. You can, you have to write both sides of the story. Sir, why this? Why the decision was not taken? There, obviously, one reason was. One reason was that the productivity has increased, and then there, you know, there are many factors which goes into taking the decisions. and obviously i will always like to be politically correct <laughs> and i don't don't want to make any political commentary here <laughs> so decision basically was not taken to stop it so three once first was bio safety 
सेकेंड वॉज रजिस्टेंस अगेंस्ट द क्रॉप सर इतना जल्दी रजिस्टेंस क्यों आ गया बिकॉज रिमेंबर दिस फॉर प्रिलिमिनरी बिकॉज द बॉल वोम इज मोनोफेगस द रीजन फॉर द रजिस्टेंस वॉज द बॉल वोम विच इज द पेस्ट विच अटैक्स द कॉटन बॉल इज मोनोफेगस monophagous means it 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 lives it eats only cotton and cotton was making what cotton was producing the toxin so it was having over exposure to that toxin and when it was having over exposure to toxin the resistance trajectory was fast like antibiotic resistance so monophagous same is the thing which people are cautioning in case of bt brinjal because that past in case of bt brinjal is also monophagous means it eats and lives only on brinjal now when brinjal is making that toxin that pest will have over exposure and it will also acquire the resistance quite fast like this one happened but decision was not taken and one more argument given by the parliamentary committee was so the productivity of bt cotton is more in those areas where good irrigation facilities are available in those places where the irrigation facilities are not so good the normal cotton has better productivity okay so this is it agar hum thoda piche jaye to isse pehle ek aur kaam ho chuka hai 2009 and 10 2009 and 10 government of india was placed or poised to give permission for the first edible gm crop that was bt brinjal in those days the environment minister was mr jay ram ramesh and he was about to give permission like i'm just trying to dramatize it a bit means everything was set to give the permission to bt brinjal then obviously there were certain reports and the reports were like biodiversity related impact of brinjal second was the impact on human health because cotton is not an edible crop brinjal is definitely an edible crop so when people are going to eat that brinjal how the toxin is going to affect the human health we were not sure about it hmm. and third point was there were allegations there were allegations that monsanto and mahico who has developed that bt brinjal they were claiming they were claiming the properties of the natural variety of brinjal as their own matlab wo apne brinjal ki wo khasiyat bhi unka daawa kar rahe the apne brinjal ka jo ki pehle se hi hamare country mein jo brinjal paya jata hai bangan paya jata hai usme maujood tha jisko bio piracy kehte hain jab chori kehte hain jisko in sare muddon ko dhyan mein rakhte hue jairam ramesh sahab ne 2010 mein india mein 10 saal ke liye बीटी बैंगन पर प्रतिबंध लगा दिया कि देर विल बी नो परमिशन फॉर बीटी ब्रिंजल इन टेन फॉर टेन इयर्स इन इंडिया ओके सो दैट वॉज दिस इज दिस हैज ऑलरेडी हैपन दिस हैज ऑलरेडी हैपन सो देन वाई सर वाई मिस्टर जयराम रमेश डिड नॉट टुक द डिसीजन नाउ बिकॉज लेटर ऑन ही वॉज रिप्लेस्ड एंड अनदर एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्टर वॉज देयर बट दैन इट इज नॉट अबाउट इंडिविजुअल्स इट इज अबाउट द पॉलिसी and the policy should remain but then different individuals think differently chaliye theek hai to ye sab hua fir kya ho raha hai uske baad so obviously some people like you who are an, who are enlightened citizens then approached the supreme court of india and they filed a pil in supreme court of india so these are very incriminating evidences which have been submitted by the parliamentary committee and the government is not taking any action on that while acting on that pil supreme court of india constituted a six membered टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट्स कमेटी तो फिर उसके बाद क्या हुआ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व के बाद सिक्स मेंबर्ड टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट्स कमेटी वॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड बाय सुप्रीम कोर्ट नाउ दिस टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट्स कमेटी हैज गिवन इट्स रिपोर्ट टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट नाउ इट हैज बीन ऑलमोस्ट यू नो डिकेड लगभग दस साल होने वाले हैं अभी दस साल हुए नहीं हैं uh and we have two governments at the center the one led by mr singh and now currently the one led by mr modi supreme court has been uh, has been asking the governments i'm using plural hmm, so don't take it as singular that sir please come out with a policy hmm, 
like uh, on what basis you ban a crop, on what basis you allow a crop, so that people should should be should be better informed about it. एक तरफ हम एस टी कॉटन की परमिशन नहीं देते हैं चलिए अच्छी बात है बी टी ब्रिंजल पर बैन लगा दिया चलिए बहुत अच्छी बात है पर उसी ग्राउंड पर हम बी टी फिर हम जी एम मस्टर्ड को आगे लेकर चलने लगते हैं तो सर ये क्या हो रहा है लाइक वन स्टेप फॉरवर्ड एंड टू स्टेप बैकवर्ड्स सो दैन दिस टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट्स कमेटी इज लाइंग रिपोर्ट इज लाइंग विद द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड एज ऑफ नाउ वी डोंट हैव एनी क्लियर कट और यू नो इवन अ हेजी पॉलिसी of related to gm crops so i will come with uh, i will just discuss the recommendations made by the technical experts committee hmm? see as far as the technical experts committee is concerned hmm? the first recommendation given by the technical experts committee is there should be no permission first recommendation hmm? no permission for edible gm crops for how long for 10 years so no permission to be given to edible gm crops for the next 10 years now this is very important 10 years some of you might be thinking that you should have given either say yes or no see this saal kyun rakha dekho uske piche reason hai first and foremost hmm? in 10 years time we will be having more data through research and development regarding the impact on human health and environment so we will be in a better position to take a call whether we should allow such crops or should not allow such crops second uh, as you must be aware of the fact the global benchmark the global norm for edible gm crops has been that there should be labeling like if you see recently food safety standards authority of india has come up with a, a new notification for the G, for the labeling hmm? and processing processing means remove the harmful chemicals and labeling means the company who is using those uh, gm products in making any edible thing so on top of that packet they need to put up two alphabets gm this is labeling now the, here is the question very simple question it's a very simple question we all know that we don't have this infrastructure for labeling and processing how many labs we have who can test a food product for the presence of of a gm component or a foreign gene like recently there was a controversy of gm rice in europe and they were blaming us hmm? but as of now obviously in india there has been no permission for gm rice because only one gm crop has been permitted that is bt cotton that is through testing so we have three labs who can find out whether there is a foreign gene in that edible product one is center for dna fingerprinting diagnostics hyderabad and another is center for food technology research institute mysore and the third being the national bureau for plant genetic Res uh, resources that is delhi and there is no fourth lab which can find out and then processing food processing industry it is there it is there there is no doubt but it is not uniformly present so one very simple question which goes against bt brinjal is how you are going to ensure labeling and processing because we all know how brinjal is being sold okay you have you are not from mars that you don't know how brinjal is being sold whether us or india or britain or africa it is sold open to aapko kya lagta hai from the field it will go to food processing industry where they will remove the chemicals by putting it into another, some other chemicals and then on that brinjal they will put a sticker gm and then it will come to that vegetable vendor and then it will come to your house and oh you will tell your parents see genetically modified hai nahi yes it's not possible it's not simply possible to ye kaise karenge agar sir nahi karenge to kya hoga नहीं करेंगे तो मी एंड यू विल बी ईटिंग हार्मफुल केमिकल्स 
सर उससे क्या होगा आई डोंट हैव टू टेल यू वॉट विल हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो दिस इज अ कैच ट्वेंटी टू पोजिशन सो देन वॉट हैपन हेयर वॉट हैपन हेयर इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स इशूड अ नोटिफिकेशन अंडर कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट 1986 for mandatory GM labeling. Mandatory GM labeling means if anyone is selling or making anything which uses genetically modified part or a component or anything which is sourced from genetically modified plant or animal they have to put up two alphabets gm and for that purpose legal metrology legal metrology packaged commodities rules were notified then later on food safety standards authority of india came with the notification okay so i will write here food safety standards authority of india came with the notification that if gm component is more than 1% then only labeling is required means if gm component is less than 1% then labeling is not required so labeling if gm part is more than 1% okay now here two two things are there in a country like india where agriculture is decentralized yes and uh, food processing industry is uh, unorganized that's the fact is it really possible to ensure labeling and processing it is not impossible but it's not going to be easy also and one of the challenge which we are going to encounter is with respect to those small and marginal farmers as we all know overwhelming majority of the farmers are small and marginal and a big chunk of the produce they have is for eating consumption so you just imagine a farmer in punjab harvesting gm mustard and that fellow felt like having sarson ka saag in the lunch so he will pick up the leaves of that mustard and will go to either delhi or mysore or hyderabad sir please isko test kar do na mujhko lunch mein i am getting late ha huh? so it's not possible or that uh, farmer in bastar district of chatisgarh with one acre of land he is growing rice just to eat and he don't know that might have been gm rice will it be possible to ensure processing over there forget about labeling no and then just imagine those small self help groups you might have seen a bus stand or a railway station or when you were going through highway there is a small sh shack over there and a, a family is selling the homemade fried items they are hardly having a budget of few thousand rupees you think they will register their whatever name they have given to their product to the food safety standards authority of india i don't think so so these are the challenges and one more challenge is economic again if you will go for mandatory gm labeling that will increase the cost of the product and if you are increasing the cost of the product with the same value of nutrients why people will buy why they will say sir hum kyun dein zyada you won't be able to convince them so it will reduce the commercial viability so these are the challenges we have to find the answer huh now there is one more aspect to that G whether genetic engineering appraisal committee should deal with the labeling or 
Food Safety Standards Authority of India should deal with the labeling. Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee created under Environment Protection Act 1986. Food Safety Standards Authority of India created under Food Safety Standards Act 2006. If you go by the law, it is the Food Safety Standards Act which has defined food. So as per this law, food is anything which is unprocessed, partially processed or completely processed. So which law has defined Food Safety Standards Act has defined food. And the same law says it is the responsibility of Food Safety Standards Authority of India to regulate the food products. So obviously edible GM things should come under the purview of Food Safety Standards Authority of India. But Food Safety Standards Authority of India came into existence in 2011. Prior to that we were having Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee which is under Ministry of Environment and Forest and it is under Ministry of Health. So in 2016 Government of India told genetic engineering you continue with the regulation of the GM foods. Huh? So as per the notification of the government of India the responsibility of regulating GM foods lies with genetic engineering appraisal committee. Okay, But if you go by the definition of the law that should be done by the food safety standards authority. So there is what I am like some of you will definitely might stop writing the comments. Hmm? Uh, uh, like uh, hmm? so we have b uh, lack of clarity. Hmm? exactly whether the law will prevail or that will prevail. So, this is a little issue. One more here, one more body. Director General Foreign Trade. Director General Foreign Trade. Which is under obviously, which is uh, under Foreign Trade Regulation Act. If someone is bringing or sending uh, edible GM things without permission then they can impose penalty. So they deal only with the imported one. Domestically it comes under the purview of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, Food Safety Standards Authority of India but the first step towards labeling was taken up by Ministry of Consumer Affairs under Consumer Protection Act 1986. So, first of all, we have to define properly that we have to deal with Which is not a big deal. That can be streamlined. That can be, in my opinion, Food Safety Standards Authority of India should be the sole one to decide as far as edible GM things are concerned and this is not uh, something very difficult to imagine as well. So you will say sir what about Europe, hmm? uh, Europe, hmm? in Europe uh, there is a ban, in France, Germany there is an absolute ban on GM crops huh? and you know what Europe was the first to adopt GM labeling and since the adoption of the GM labeling by Europe. Hmm, the, the commercial viability of those products reduced. So this has happened, this has happened. This is first part, huh? there should be no permission for edible GM crops for the next 10 years, hmm? the recommendation part. Next recommendation is, if a country is a center of origin of a crop, if a country is a center of origin of a crop, then its GM variety should not be permitted. GM variety should not be permitted. There are two reasons basically why it should not be permitted. First reason is uh, it will, it will, it is it is going to against Carter Jenner protocol. It is going against Carter Jenner protocol. Carter Jenner protocol deals with the GMO. GMO means genetically modified organism. Hmm. And it says if a, you, if a country is a center of origin for a crop, then in that country the GM variety should not be permitted of that particular crop. 
So for cotton and brinjal, India is a center of origin. This is again a very strong argument against Pt brinjal. That if we are a center of origin of a certain crop, then we should not, we should not allow its GM variety. So the problem kya hai? Dusra problem simple hai. If this is field 1 and this is field 2. Here, let's take Basmati. Basmati, again, India is a center of origin. So, here, India, like here, someone is, is harvesting normal Basmati and here, GM Basmati. When the pollens will move, they will move in both the directions. So, one of the two outcomes may happen. Your GM Basmati might get wiped out. No problem, you can again make it in the lab. And another is your GM normal Basmati might get contaminated in terms of genetic features. Then from where you are going to bring this because this was created in nature. So this way what will happen, the genetic diversity will reduce. Gene pool will reduce. And if gene pool will reduce, biodiversity will reduce. And biodiversity is the basis of agriculture. Agriculture is the basis of food security. So the argument is turned upside down. Sir, so for whose, for whom? Kis ke liye, sir? To ye ek baat hogi, center of origin. This also goes again, Beiti Brinjal. Third, third important recommendation which was given by the technical experts committee was technical experts committee was that we sh no permission for for herbicide tolerant variety which i have just explained when i was explaining rrf cotton because it will lead to the emergence of super -V. These were the three major recommendations of the technical experts committee. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you got some idea about it. Hmm. Then I, I can't resist myself from um, sharing one more development which happened. If you see 2017 Yavatmal district in Maharashtra. Now you take your call, I will just put facts in front of you. Many farmers uh, who have grown cotton Suddenly, they realize their cotton, BT cotton, that their BT cotton is no more effective against the pest. And then they started spraying the pesticide. And many died while spraying pesticide. No, that was not suicide. And some of them obviously lost their eyesight. That is a very, very, you know, big development. Then 2018, just sharing one of the things. Uh, Mr. M. S. Swaminathan, he doesn't require any introduction in our country. He wrote an article in one of the prominent newspapers in the country and in that article, the, the gist of that article was that in case of India, in case of India, that was the, you know, the, the line of thought in that article, BT cotton has failed to give Indian farmers sustainable livelihood. That was his uh, that, that was his thought, and you have every right to disagree. Hmm. And that comma. Then he said, in India, GM crops should be used in one percent of the cases, and that to involving abiotic factor. Abiotic means drought resistant, water resistant, salt tolerant, increasing the uh, you know increasing this shelf life or having the higher level of nutrients which is what we call as biofortified means we should not have pest resistant and herbicide tolerant varieties hmm? because in both the cases the pest will become resistant or the weed will become the resistant but then that was his his call hmm? you have every right to take your own call but let me tell you one more fact. We are uh, number five in terms of area under uh, BT cotton and that is when we have only one GM crop uh, being permitted for the cultivation. Just imagine if we can have two GM crops permitted, we could become number one. So that will be a gold medal. Hmm? And another thing uh, is, is that of the, of the total cotton, of the total area under cotton, 
95% is under BT cotton. So this is one problem area because this will lead to this has already resulted in homogenization of agriculture. That genetic diversity of cotton is lost. It is virtually one variety of cotton almost across the country throughout throughout the country. So, one variety is like that. And when one variety is like that, it will go good and good. And the day the pest will attack. And if that pest is able to attack from one side, we have removed the barriers. And this is what was observed in Punjab. When white fly pest happened, white fly. Then Monsanto said, sir, we never promised resistance against white fly. We promised against those three, but sir, that is also not working. That is the issue. That is the issue. But the problem is now you have you have almost eliminated your endemic or indigenous varieties. So you are too dependent on these multinational companies for the supply of the seeds. Obviously, they supply through various other Indian companies by giving them the license and all. Hmm. So this is the story of BT cotton. Now, as far as uh, the others are concerned, as far as the others are concerned, mm -hmm. uh, I will just give you this much uh, of information like uh, GM mustard not permitted. But the purpose of GM mustard was to have hybrid variety to increase the productivity. Okay, golden rice, the purpose was to have higher level of nutrients, beta carotene. GM rice is salt tolerant. Transgenic rice, uh, the arsenic content is on the lower side. Clear? Hmm? So, hmm? then after the, uh, after hmm? this, uh, the next uh, destination we have is regulatory bodies. See, regulatory bodies, as you know, we have a law, Environment Protection Act 1986. And Environment Protection Act has defined hazardous substances. Hazardous substances. One of the hazardous substances is ge genetically modified organism, GMO. So, we the people of India perceive GMOs as hazardous as per this law. So, in 1989, hmm, in 1989, Department of Biotechnology and Ministry of Environment and Forest, in those days, it, the climate change words were not added, hmm, drafted the rules. So, they together drafted the rules. And these rules are implemented by six committees, six committees, which are under Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Science and Technology. And these six committees are Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee under Ministry of Environment and Forest. Without the permission of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, there cannot be any trial or agriculture of any GM crop in India. That is the final authority. Then second one is Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee. Recombinant DNA Advisory means the application of recombinant DNA uh, related means that is the GM crops. Hmm. It is under Ministry of Science and Technology. Okay, Review Committee on Genetic Modification under Ministry of Science and Technology. Review Committee means in India there are so many GM related projects going on. So, it is their responsibility to review them. Hmm. Okay, Institutional Biosafety Committee. Institutional Biosafety Committee again under Ministry of Science and Technology means uh, all those labs who are involved in the research on GM crops or GMOs, genetically modified organisms, it is mandatory for them, it is mandatory for them to have a committee to prevent the accidental release of the genetically modified organisms in the environment. This is where China failed in Wuhan. Because their bio warfare lab was in Wuhan and this is where the corona outbreak happened. That's my opinion. This is my opinion. Then there is one more I will write here. State Biotechnology Coordination Committee. 
state biotechnology coordination committee to coordinate the implementation of the rules while carrying out the trials of the GM crops and last but not the least district level committee. So, these are the six committees created under the Environment Protection Act to implement the rules for the handling of the GMOs in India. Okay. Besides that we have Food Safety Standards Authority of India, we have Director General Foreign Trade but you know they are not associated with the permission of the GM crops cultivation or the trial. Food Safety Standards Authority of India will do only this much to test and to specify the norms or to decide the protocol for the labeling and the processing. Food Safety Standards Authority will not be saying oh this GM crop to be allowed, this to be not, this not to be allowed. Similarly, Director General Foreign Trade can only stop any GM product from entering India. Again, their role is not related to giving the permission or denying the permission for the trial or the cult cultivation of any GM crop. Hmm? Actually, this topic is, 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 all, is endless. So, I have tried to make it a brief discussion hmm? uh, so that you can have some idea. Hmm? So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, with patience this particular video and I will keep on coming uh, up in future as well with such a small crisp videos so that you can have some idea and already you know a lot I hope I have given you one point which you are not having till uh, obviously you started watching this video thank you very much see you in future